the numbers are, are leveling off so i'm hoping that most people um have joined the webinar now um so welcome everybody to the latest version of AbilityNet Live. Uh, my name is Sarah Bottrell and I am the Free Services Marketing Manager for AbilityNet. I'm delighted today to be joined by Kevin from Learn My Way, uh, by um, Kathy from Digital Unite and uh, by Michelle who's going to be talking to us about um, the library service. So um, I'm just going to run through a little bit of housekeeping and an introduction to ourselves and what we're going to be covering today. So a little bit of housekeeping. Hopefully everybody can see that we have live captions appearing at the bottom of the screen. Please do use the Q&A window to ask any questions. Um, the chat window is disabled, but if you have any queries or questions, please pop them in the Q&A window um, and somebody will answer it there. Um, following the webinar, we'll be making slides, a transcript and a recording available, um, and you will be notified by email and receive all the relevant links there. And we'd also um, be sending you a feedback form um, and we'd love any feedback that you can give us about the webinar um, or any suggestions for future webinars as well. So. so today we're going to be covering the topic of online learning um, and it's something that's been getting a lot of attention I think lately. There are people who have been furloughed from work. If you've been furloughed, you're not allowed to work, but you can engage in online learning and it's something that can provide welcome shape and structure and also encourage, um, just encourage you to continue that professional development while you're on furlough. So today we're going to be exploring where to access that learning. Um, so we'll be giving a brief introduction to AbilityNet, as I said, how we can help um, and looking at AbilityNet Live. This is part of a series of webinars that we've been running. Um, we'll be looking a bit deeper at online learning. What is it? Who's it for? And what you can expect. Um, then we'll be um, introducing people to some basic digital skills um, with the help of Kevin and Kathy. Um, and then I will give a brief overview of some free online and paid for learning courses. We were hoping to be joined by OU and Future Learn, but just due to um, pressures of time, they're unable to join us today. But I'll just give you a brief overview of that. Um, and then we'll be looking at some video learning platforms, hearing from um, Michelle about how your local library can help um, and just signposting to some other resources which might be useful. And then we'll just wrap up briefly with um, how AbilityNet can help you continue your learning. So hopefully that all sounds okay and people are sticking with me. So we'll just move on. So AbilityNet um, believes in a digital world accessible to all. That's never been more important than at this time when we are um, physically distanced and people are becoming more and more reliant on technology as a means of connecting. We support people at home, at work and in education. Um, so we have a network of 300 plus DBS Czech volunteers. Um, normally we would provide that advice face to face, which obviously isn't, um, we're not able to do that at this time, but you can still call us for free um, and the number is on screen there. Um, and we also have some free online resources um, and the links are there. And as I say, the slides will be made available afterwards. So um, you can look up tools such as My Computer My Way, My Study My Way, and we also have a range of free fact sheets available as well. So in terms of making a difference to our clients, so our clients are, uh, are typically people who have a disability or they might be older people who are looking to use technology to connect. And we know that um, by supporting them in doing that, we make a, a real difference. So 80% of our clients say that they are better able to use technology thanks to intervention from our volunteers. 78% find it easier to manage daily life. 
um, and 69% felt less isolated. So I think that's just a, a you know snapshot of how technology can actually bridge the physical gap that we're all experiencing at this time. So as I said, this is a, um, a series, part of a series of webinars. Um, and if you're interested in either recordings of past webinars, which include how to um, keep in touch with friends and families or online safety, or in finding out about future webinars, the link is there. Um, and again, that um, will be available to people after today. So online learning, um, as I've already mentioned, there are lots of benefits of online learning. Um, at this current time, um, it can help with continued professional development. Um, and that might be whether you're in work or during furlough. It could be students at university or preparing for university. Um, personal development. Um, there are lots of short courses available to support people with their own mental health or understanding the pandemic um, and many of those are listed on the sites that we'll be looking at earlier. As I mentioned, um, scheduled learning can also provide the, the routine or just a regular check-in on something um, which can be good for mental health um, and I know many people um, at this time are finding that, particularly if you are on furlough, this normal shape and structure to our lives has um, disappeared quite quickly. So online learning can be a way of providing some of that structure. How does it work? Um, so many of these kind of massive online open courses, um, and we'll be looking at some of those later. Um, it, it's different from physical learning. You don't need to walk into a room as such. So you, and quite often you can learn at your own pace a lot of it is self-learning um, some may have deadlines some are more open-ended the courses are repeated so some of them once you've bought into the course you can just keep popping back in again um, and many are free um, although some are paid for and there are short and longer courses available as well so um, our focus is on helping people um, through technology and as I said um, access to technology and the ability to use digital skills is particularly relevant at this time so I wanted to just pass over to yourself Kevin if you um, are you off mute great um, could just talk us through um, learn my way so what is learn my way to start off with there's a link there uh, thanks Sarah um, so yes I um, Learn My Way is uh, a, a website uh, and on that website people will find that there are uh, about 30 uh, really short courses, 20 to 30 minutes each one in length and they cover some really sort of simple basic digital skills. So they start from how to, how to use the mouse, how to use the keyboard uh, and go through to things like shopping online, searching online, uh, or applying for benefits or, or government services. Even uh, at the moment, one of the key ones that is coming up is, is finding relevant health information. Uh, so they're the sort of, they're the, they're the areas, they're the sorts of things that people can learn. Yeah, and uh, you say that public services piece is really relevant at the moment, isn't it? Lots of people dependent on access to public services and they all seem to be asking you to go online so you can help people with that as well I, I, absolutely um i think we've seen in the last sort of five years um it, it's actually become easier to to access public services through online means than it is through offline means and and at the moment as you say that that's even more of, of a an issue so uh, it's great to be able to help people uh, just grasp what is possible for them. Yeah, great. And we'll be coming back to that with Michelle later as we look about accessing your local library online. Nice. Um, so a bit of a trick question here, but some people may be wondering if I'm new to digital skills and online, can I really become more confident and learn about it by using an online platform? There's a bit of a conundrum there. Yeah, the, well, there really is. And, and traditionally, we, we've worked through a lot of uh, community centres and, and uh, digital champions. I'm sure your, your next speaker will talk about them, uh, helping people to actually access this and uh, not just sort of um, 
try things out and learn about them, but to, to practice things for real. Uh, so on our learning platform, on Learn My Way, uh, we have, uh, as part of the courses, we have little practice activities, which let people sort of try it out in a, uh, a realistic but safe place. Um, and that's really important to us. It's not the same as actually trying it for real. And, and um, we know that uh, actually doing it for real it, it is better for making sure that people will do it again. But it, it's as, as good as we can get it. Uh, and by trying to sort of make it as realistic as we can, we, we think that you can actually improve someone's confidence and, and get them actually working and doing things online. Yeah, and you mentioned the mouse skill set, and I had a quick look at that one. As you say, it's, it's really, really simple things, isn't it? Like learning how to left click, learning how to right click, and it kind of talks yeah. you through that step by step. Yeah, I, absolutely. It's a, a lot of the things are things that uh, we we tend to become almost a bit blasé about once we you can't unlearn things. So once you're using uh, online services and online platforms, all these things that you're doing uh, uh, tend to sort of become a little bit invisible to you. And it's only when you try to sort of pass them on to someone else that you remember them. Uh, and that's the sorts of things that we're, we're trying to sort of highlight uh, through, through Learn My Way. Great. Um, and we've talked a little bit about some of the examples here. What is it? We've yep. talked about mouse and keyboard skills. What are yep. some of the other things that are available that go a little bit beyond that, just so that yeah. people are aware? So, so one of the things that we've noticed since uh, people have been in sort of the lockdown situation, we have seen a little bit of a shift in, in the things that are popular. So as you can imagine, uh, when, the, when people are being guided to this, a lot of the things were the, the keyboard and mouse. But now uh, people are sort of stumbling across Learn My Way on their own. And uh, we're seeing that it's more, we have sort of an introduction to office programs. So something about how to use Word or, or Google Docs or those type of things or spreadsheets. And they're becoming more, more popular. Uh, and we actually, we published our first course about video calling uh, just back in February. And um, it, we didn't realize how popular that was going to be and how important that was going, going to be. So that, that's actually been our most popular course in the last three weeks. Mm, I'm sure none of us will be surprised to hear that, Kevin. Yeah. That's fantastic. Great. Thanks ever so much for that. So um, I'm just going to launch our first poll now, which is just to find out a little bit about everybody who is listening. So I'll just launch that. And this is to find out how confident people are in terms of using um, a device or basic computing skills. So your options are extremely confident, very confident, reasonably confident, or not at all confident. Um, so we'll just allow maybe 30 seconds or so for everybody to have a go and, and let us know how confident you feel. So I can see the numbers going up and down. I'll be able to share those with everyone soon. Okay, so I'll just share those results. So we can see here that there's 42% um, are extremely confident. Um, there are 38% of people who are very confident, 19% um, reasonably confident. Um, and if you said there's lots of ways of growing those online skills um, and, and well done to whoever the 1% is who is not at all confident and has been brave enough to, to join our webinar today. So interesting results there. So we'll just move on. So I just wanted to, Kevin, I, I know you're familiar with this site. I wonder if you could just briefly talk to us about BT Skills for Tomorrow, because there's some crossover with your work here. Uh, yeah, there is. So um, we, we've, um, we have a few of the uh, Learn My Way courses and, and some other materials listed on BT Skills.
articles for tomorrow, but um, that they, they cover a much wider range uh, and they, they also offer, as you've uh, got there on your second bullet, they're actually doing webinars uh, similar to, to this one that you're running today, uh, covering off how to, how to use different services and, and different things and they're being uh, freely uh, uh, available to to uh, people and cover a range of different topics from uh, online safety to uh, using uh, different tools mm. and again the public services featuring there so I think you know if people can't find um, the one that they're looking for on your site this is another resource that they can explore yeah absolutely I, and uh, they are being quality checked before they go on there as well which is good to know great thanks for that so Cathy, welcome, if you're able to unmute yourself. First test. Welcome Cathy, thanks so much for joining us from Digital Unite. Um, perhaps you'd like to um, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your role and how Digital Unite is helping people embrace um, just the digital world, but specifically the role around online learning. Um, yeah, so we also have a learning platform and our learning platform um, is called the Digital Champions Network. The clue is in the name. It's um, a learning platform to support digital champions and train them with um, a range of courses. But it's also a platform where organisations who are running projects with digital champions um, can um, learn new skills and understand how to manage their project and get a range of management information. Um, in terms of embracing online learning, we, as I say, create our own learning as well for digital champions, but we are really keen for digital skills to be shared out amongst those people who are excluded. And as you've already mentioned, now is the perfect, well, both of you and Kevin have mentioned now is the perfect time because you might have a bit more time on your hands. Um, and also there are many people who are missing out. And if you think about the people that are missing out, I think over the age of 75, 59 percent of, of um, disabled people are are offline don't have the skills so we've really been putting a, a big push around that and we've been offering free training for digital champions at this time for people who i'm glad to see so many people with them um, confidence in their digital skills in your poll so we're offering free training if you want to help your family or you want to help your friends or neighbors in your community and um, we're offering free training but we've also um developed a suite of remote guides because as you can't get to people in the same way and sit down next to them what are the particular challenges are offering help over the phone and how do you summon up the right amount of patience to do that and what are the um, barriers that you might need to overcome so that's kind of where we've been moving our focus uh, since this crisis and I think, I don't know what your feedback has been, Cathy, but that family thing, I think, is something that lots of people will be noticing. They've bought a device for an older relative or somebody, and they're actually now becoming an online or a digital champion themselves overnight. Are you finding that that's some way that you're having to support people? Definitely. People um, who didn't, don't think of themselves as digital champion are offering, often being digital champions. So by having some bit of support around that with our remote champion guides we're hoping to give them some top tips um, around how do you manage it if you can't see the other person's screen how do you you know dial them on one phone and help them to use um, the digital technology and the other one and what do you do when it all goes wrong what do you say to build to keep building people's confidence that kind of thing so you know we're trying to look at a range of things including um we're coming up to looking at security and offering a help to people who you don't know which is another Kind of widening of that circle but most people i think do know somebody themselves who could do with a bit of help mm, brilliant um and i know that you've got many assets and we're going to come on now to talk in a bit more detail about um the champions network um, and what you can provide so perhaps you'd just like to talk us through in a bit more depth on the services that you're providing here yeah so in our in our network um on the platform we've got um We've got our e-learning courses and they all come with Mozilla open source badges and the, the main courses are CPD certified and we've made all those courses with subject matter experts. For example, our accessibility courses have been made with AbilityNet. Um, our, our Helping Older People has 
courses have been made with Age UK. Um, we have a course for helping um, your colleagues, which has been made with Digital Work Research. And um, we've just recently made a health champion course with NHS Digital. So we have really robust courses to support you. Um, we also have um, a range of guides, but resources, everything you need um, to run a project or just to help people in your community. So, um, yeah, so we've got a kind of a complete ecosystem of support for champions and for organisations. So some people might actually discover at this time that they've got a, a real talent for helping people with um, digital skills just by being thrown in at the deep end and, and they can earn badges and, and kind of gain a little bit of motivation along the way. Yes, not only that, it's very good. You get the uh, CPD um, certification, but we also have um, a certificate of achievement they can download. So it's a really good way of building your CV, building soft skills um, if you haven't got them. So thinking particularly of perhaps people, school leavers, leaving at 18, not quite sure what they're going to do yet. The job market's in a bit of a weird shape, but this would be a very nice thing for them to um, start volunteering in a kind of way that they could manage and feel comfortable doing. So yeah, so it's a it's a good way of spending some of that time, and you could be changing a life. I mean, I'm sure, um, Kevin, you know the same that lives get changed when you help people with those basic digital skills, and there's you know no getting away from it. So it's yeah, quite an exciting thing to be a part of. Yeah, it's a strange times, but an air of excitement as well. Mm. So um, on our next slide, I think um, we've got some links here. So. Um, do you want to just briefly catch on where some of these are signposting to? Yeah, so the first one is we're, we're offering some free licenses for individuals um, who are working on their own or volunteering on their own in the community or part of a small charity or small network, some free licenses to train as a digital champion. And we've had a really good response to those so far, but we have got a few of those left. We've, we've given 100 of those for right now. Um, we've also pulled together some of our skills guides that are relevant to um, health, relevant to um, social, you know, being socially, staying socially connected and also working remotely. And um, we've also got this, these guides that we're building a sort of a little small library of guides for helping people remotely that that you've got your grandmother on the phone or your neighbour on the phone. How do you take the next step and get them to turn on their smartphone? and so on that's fantastic so, thanks so much yeah and that's all on our website so um, and the links are there so yeah and again we'll be sharing this afterwards so you don't need to frantically scribble it down that's fantastic thanks ever so much Kathy you're welcome um so um I'm just going to briefly talk through some um online um free and paid for learning so future learn is run by the open university um, and you can see the link there which you'll be able to click on afterwards um, and the courses come from all over the place really so um, british library british museum um, they have short courses online degrees free paid for um as um the same with digital unite some of them you can earn certificates or credentials quite a lot of them um, are free um, they break them down into various different categories which um, is a great way of searching if you already know for example that you've got an interest in let's say IT and computer science sticking on our theme um, so you can go in and have a look there and then if you dig a little deeper um, some of what I think Kathy was touching on there is that you know I think people are quite as well as a passion for online learning people are quite hungry for information at the moment around what's happening all around us so they have a specific course looking at tackling the novel virus which is quite short um, uh, work-life balance the impact of remote working lots of us have been thrown into online working um, but a really vast range of things um, if you're interested in um, building a future with robots that's something that might be um, just an interest that you want to look at so there are many courses there um, and as I say, do go in and have a browse round. So coming to our second poll now, I've just launched that. Just interested to see whether anyone has actually taken an online course before. Um, 
So that's a simple yes, no question for you. So I'm just gonna give a few seconds for people to answer this one. Okay, so I just end the poll and share it. So actually quite a lot of people have engaged in online learning as we can see here. So 88% of people joining us today have previously taken an online course um, and 13% who haven't. So thanks for um, doing that. So the Open University um, have a platform which offers free courses and that's called Open Learn. Um, you can work at your own pace. There are over a thousand courses available on here. Um, and many of them, again, are badged courses or you can get a statement just to say that you um, have taken a course or to demonstrate um, interest in and a commitment to learning. So if you were looking at doing something in the future and you just want to dip your toe in, this is a really good place to start. Um, again, they have subject categories. So everything from money and business to politics and law, history, nature and the environment. Um, and some examples here, again, they have um, launched some specific COVID courses. So there's one around if you were already working in nursing and healthcare, but you wanted to think about the environment for that. Um, but also, again, how, how does the human body fight a viral infection? That might just um, be something that you were interested in looking at. But these are just a, a real taster of the types of courses that are available on there. Um, and, I, you know, I would urge you to go in and have a look and have a browse around and see if there's anything that um, piques your interest there. Open University, very well known, um, in 2019, it celebrated its 50th birthday. These ones tend to be more um, kind of uh, degree level, longer courses, um, quite a lot of them do charge, um, but there is a really, really broad selection on here. So you can do a certificate of higher education, diploma, everything up to an honours degree at a distance here, very well respected worldwide. Um, so the fees are done on a module by module basis um, and it works on the kind of credit scheme that universities use. Um, so you can see some sample prices there for 60 credits, it's about just over £3,000. Um, but it, they are very well respected degree level courses. Um, Udemy is one which is um, getting a reasonable amount of attention at the moment. Um, during COVID, they seem to be um, offering some really, really big discounts. So if you go on there, you'll find that a lot of their courses are offering up to 80% off. Um, and these are great for all ages, actually. They've got a variety of short paid for courses, um, claim to offer around 150,000 different courses, multiple languages supported. Again, lots of different topics featuring on here. Um, so some of the things um, on here, so if you were um, somebody who was learning, you can actually get support with your learning. So this is one that I thought was quite interesting is learning to um, do speed reading. Um, you can do a, a Python boot camp if you're so inclined. Um, if you've always been interested in video production, I saw something on the BBC this week about a lady who is having to suddenly become a director for her actor husband because they're doing a movie filming in lockdown. So all kinds of skills that you can learn on here. Um, and as I say, quite a lot of them are heavily discounted at this time. So it's going to launch our third poll. So just interested in finding out about the types of um, subjects that 
do interest people in terms of online learning. So there are some examples here. Um, and if you um, have others that you want to pop in the Q&A or um, yeah, others that interest you. So we've listed them as accessing public services online, which we've touched on already, basic computing skills, basic internet skills, digital accessibility, which Cathy mentioned earlier, um, health and well-being, obviously a hot topic at the moment, as is mental health. Um, so yeah, just interested in seeing um, the types of subjects that people are interested in. And also um, a secondary question here, just to find out in terms of appetite for paying for that learning. There are lots of free courses available, but also paid for ones out there. So it'd just be interesting to know whether people um, are up for paying for learning online. Let's just give another, another few seconds there because I know you've got quite a lot of options to um, get your head around. Great, so let's just see where that's ended up. So um, let's see what's got the most here. So mental health is looking very popular um, at 60% there. Lots of people are interested in finding out more. Um, digital accessibility proving popular with 58%. Um, what else have we got there? Science, technology and math. Um, and it looks like um, there is an appetite from um, a majority there, 64% in terms of, oh, I've forgotten to share, sorry everyone, um, paying for online learning. So yeah, interesting results there. Move on. So, Michelle. Thanks for patiently waiting in the no, way okay. there. How are you doing? Well, um, welcome. Perhaps you'd like to tell us um, a little bit about your role um, and, and how things have been, you know, interesting times for you at the moment. It is. All our libraries are closed at the moment, which is why we've um, increased our e-offer. So I'm a librarian for um, East Sussex Library and Information Services. I'm part of a wider reading and wellbeing team. And we're responsible for delivering services um, countywide, working with a range of partners and agencies, um, including schools, uh, nurseries, businesses, NHS. So quite extensive across the across the county. Mm. And how have you made that transition then? How how has it been, and how can you support people online in a way that you? Are unable to support them in the community at this time. Okay so we've, we've increased our e-offer as obviously libraries aren't open and people can't get into the physical buildings for their books so we've bought lots more e-books, we've got e-books, e-audio books, um, we have e-magazines, uh, e-newspapers with press reader which we've always had but um, we've increased what we've bought, we've increased our range they're all quite easy to access so um, on your tablet or your phone or your laptop on the tablet or phone you, you would download an app so for the books it's Libby RB digital press reader for the newspapers you would download the app onto your phone um, or, or tablet sign in with your library card and then you can access access the services straight away you can join online you don't have to go into a library building to join anymore um, if you just join, it's a really simple process, just basic name, address, details. You will be given a, a temporary number straight away, so you can start accessing our services straight away, and then you'll get a card very quickly within two or three, day, two or three days through the post. And if um, I haven't joined and I want to do, um, sign up online, do I go to my local library or is there like a national website that I should visit? It's East Sussex um, County Council website, so if you go onto East Sussex County Council, and then libraries, and then um, follow the link to join up online. It'll take a few minutes, it's very easy. So that would be the same for anyone across the UK to visit their local county it's council? East Sussex, yes, but yes, yeah. All, all their um, county council will have library services online, so they would do the one relevant for their local council. 
Great, okay. Um, um, we've okay. also made uh, uh, a lot of our um, ancestry sites. So we had Ancestry and Find My Past. You used to only be access, access them free from the library building, but while we're all um, at home, you can now access them free at home as well, which is a really good offer. And then we've got our online subscription sites, all free to access at home, um, dictionaries and encyclopedias. So if you're doing some private research or something, very easy to access those. Um, we also have things like um, driving test theory practice. So you can, if you're waiting to do your driving test practice, not the hazards, perception, the whole test, do a mock test. We have the Go Citizen online as a subscription site, so you can go on that and have a go if you're waiting to take your citizenship. We have a whole range of services online. Great, and this might sound like an odd question, but if there's not are the ebooks available specific to your library, is there such a thing as a interlibrary ebook loan scheme? Or no, there's. That work? there's they're specific to our library so we've always had it's always been a really good large collection but obviously with people only been able, able to access them at home we have increased our offer hugely we've we've bought loads of books while we've all been at home while we've all been working from home yeah and the driving thing sounds really good i saw somebody from the aa saying that actually there are lots of people who might need to brush up on their skills anyway when we're allowed back out there who've forgotten how to drive and forgotten how to read those road signs <laughs> that's very true it's very good to so say you can do the hassle perception so as you're driving you can take a mock theory test um, learn the highway code it's, it's as it would be if you were taking the test so that's a good idea <laughs> yeah great um, and and lots of free resources there for people just to support continued learning or to learn something new yeah yes Yes, yes. So we also got Law and Rights and Cobra for businesses. It's a site for businesses. Um, just people to look for information. It is all free to access online. So if you go to, as I say, the council website and then libraries and just have a browse around and look and see all we've got there. Yeah, and great time to sign up to your local library and look forward to when they reopen. It is, yes. <laughs> we look forward to reopening too. Yeah, great. Thanks ever so much for giving us a whistle stop tour there. Thank you. Um, so just a few other things that I wanted to flag up for people, which um, many of you may have heard of um, TED Talk. So Michelle talked about apps there. There's a brilliant app that you can download for TED Talks. Um, and there's a whole range of podcasts and videos on there, quite often from really senior inspirational speakers. So and lots of them, you might, if you're on social media, you might have already seen those popping up on your Facebook feed. I know um, there's been lots from leading virologists on there, for example. Um, you can search by um, topic. So from activism to wunderkind there aren't any zeds um, but for example there's one on there about 12 truths i learned from life and writing which is really interesting um, there are um yeah a global hackathon to tackle the coronavirus pandemic but a whole range of inspiring talks on there again to just dip your toe into something or to support some uh learning that you're doing already or just just out of interest general interest so um yeah free resource highly recommended um the same with the um bbc sounds app um so that's got a really really good source of um free podcasts and lectures um from across kind of everything from bbc radio radio 4 regional radio programs um you can download that app for um, iOS, Apple or Android. Um, and for again, you know, there is topical stuff on there. So how to cure viral misinformation. Um, and the fake heiress is one which I think has been getting quite a lot of attention as well. So um, yeah, and another kind of activity, there's stuff there that's educational. There are audio books. I know Michelle's touched on those as well. Um, but there's a really good selection of audio books also on BBC Sounds for anybody that's interested in that as well. So our final poll, let me just launch this. So, <coughs> excuse me, just to, um, find out about the style of learning that people are interested in. So I think we've touched on all of these, audiobooks, podcasts, distance learning, so degree and postgraduate level, 
um, versus short courses, um, video learning, webinars such as this one, I know uh, um, gathering in popularity at the moment, lots of people taking webinars. Just be interesting to see um, what people's appetite is around this. <coughs> me. Just give it a few more seconds. Okay. So, let's see what we've got here. Um, so short and one-off courses at a distance, looking popular, webinars, just piffing it to the post there. Um, but yeah, a real range. And I think as we've touched on, actually, um, these things can work really nicely together. It's not an either or. You might take um, a, a longer course and support that with some video learning or download some podcasts as well. So um, that's interesting. Thank you. So um, I've rounded up some of the links that we've covered here and I'm not going to dwell on these now, but again, they will be available afterwards. Um, AbilityNet has got lots of resources for supporting people if you are studying. So there's a list here. So Tech Hacks for Dyslexia, um, Ambient Apps to help you focus and study. Um, we have a fact sheet on dyslexia and technology and information on learning difficulties and computing. So I've just rounded those up there as well. Um, lots of further support from us. Um, as I said, our um, free phone helpline continues to be open during this time. We're running a whole series of AbilityNet Live. My Computer My Way will show you how to adapt your technology um, for any need. Um, and My Study My Way there just to help you identify any particular um, study needs that you may have. Um, so that will all be available afterwards. But I'd like to now um, come to uh, Q&A and I'll pass to my colleague uh, Mark who has hopefully been keeping an eye on the questions coming in. Hello everyone. Yes, I've been looking the questions run through. There's some that have been answered already. For those of you that haven't spotted, the Q&A panel includes answered questions as well. So you can look at questions that we've answered as we've gone along. I've got a couple here that I think um, a couple of panellists may be to help us with. Um, uh, I'm very interested in learning how to train people and how to use digital skills and internet. From what's been shown today, which courses would you recommend? Um, I guess that might be the first place to go is Digital Unite and maybe Kevin as well, Learn My Way. I, I, both of you, I think, have elements of that in there. How to train people on how to use digital skills. Maybe a little bit of train the trainer as well as the actual core skills themselves. And if you, one of you could just comment on that within your own sort of resources. Um, I'm happy to start that, if that's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we, we do train the trainer um, and so we're very complementary to the Learn My Way that um, Good Things Foundation have that Kevin has been talking about. So the, the two things can work very well together. So we, we will give you the skills through our e-learning courses on how to help people and different sorts of people in different sorts of ways. And um, then part of the resources that we would suggest and recommend you use in actually helping them would be things like Learn My Way for sure. So um, I think, yeah, a bit of both. But if you go to our website to um, digitalunite.com, you can access those courses for free. We've just got a three month offer of allowing people to go in for free. So go and have a look and um, sign up. Great, thank you. Yeah, I, I just echo what, what Cathy has, has said. Um, their their uh, digital champion materials are, are excellent. We do have some, but to be fair, they do it better than us, so uh, use their materials for that side of things and, and then hopefully learn my way for actually teaching people. Great, thank you. Um, uh, somebody's made an interesting point here, and I, I'd just be interested for those of you who are used to seeing students using these online resources, it could include a library as well, is that um, it says, I did an excellent course with Future Learn called Digital Accessibility. 
Um, and it took me longer than it stated. Not that that was a problem, but it, that, I mean, it's okay now that I know that, but they do overestimate people's learning pace. So how, how would you try and sort of uh, uh, estimate the amount of time required for these sorts of courses? Because often you do look at them and they say 30 minutes and you don't quite know where that number's come from. Um, well, if I maybe start on this one, so um, I, I totally get where they're coming from with Future Learn and some of these other online courses. They, they're very high level and the times that they are, are uh, basing them on and and uh, I think somebody made a comment about no prior knowledge needed but I, I, I personally feel like they are quite a high level and you do need quite a lot of digital skills uh, and uh, even some critical thinking skills when you're sort of doing some of those higher level courses so uh, yeah I can I can certainly understand people sort of finding it difficult to uh, get through them in the time that they're suggesting um, certainly, uh, what we try to do is actually uh, test things out with people and see how long they are taking. Um, uh, it's part of our, our development process when we're making online learning materials is to actually test them in, in a, a real life environment, uh, actually putting people in front of them and seeing how long they take before we, uh, we suggest those times. Thank you. And Kathy, do you get feedback from the digital champions around that sort of stuff in terms of, because you've had resources there for a long time, I know. Of all yes, that. so we find with our courses, and Harriet, do feel um, free to correct me if I'm wrong, but we, we, put a rough, we put a rough time that we try to be quite comfortable with. Um, but because everybody who comes into the network has different levels of ability and is interested in different things as well. There's a lot of different things you can sort of go out from the course and read and learn about and find out about so that we're trying to create a number of different journeys within the course. So if you need to brush up on some skills, you've got lots of opportunities to do that. But obviously that would take you longer than if you just rattled through the course because you've done it all. So I do think when you're creating content and online learning that you need to be quite careful that you make sure that it's an average time. And from my own outside of the True Unite e-learning that I've been doing recently, I'd say most of the courses have taken me twice as long as they've said because it just takes you time when you get back into it to then wait to get back to the place that you've done. And you know those kind of things all take a bit of time. So um, yeah, I think it's really down to the e-learning provider to say roughly how long they would take, but for people to realize it's probably twice as long, I would say. Great, thank you. Um, and a question, this is quite a specific question, I don't know if anybody has any uh, insights around this, but particularly around anybody working with um, any memory issues or cognitive uh, issues, uh, sensory loss, those sorts of things. Is there um, any sort of advice that you can offer around uh, how to do online learning or any top tips, uh, memory difficulties, and how to manage them as an online course. We have um, a, a bite-sized course for if you're helping somebody with memory loss that may be really helpful that we made with AbilityNet. Um, I don't know if that's... Yeah, yeah. well, I, I would mention we've got um, resources on our website around all sorts mm -hmm. of different disabilities and impairments, and, and there is stuff in there around and memory loss in, in a number of different ways. Um, and I guess the other point we would make is that there may be other pieces of technology you could be using at the same time as your browser. So if you're using a website to access an online course, it may be useful to have a notepad open, a digital notepad, and you could be cutting and pasting things into that to return to, um, and simply making notes as you go along, you know, to keep tabs on where you are in a process is, I mean, often on, a, on a, an online, training course you you sort of lose track of the overarching journey that you're on and those are the sorts of things that people could do in, in just keeping a little notepad open or a word document in the background that you switch between as you're trying to work on the content itself and for some people mind maps are really helpful aren't they mark and i think we've got information about that on our website as well yeah i think we have a specific fact sheet around mind maps don't we so. yeah uh, I have a couple of questions. Um, I guess one of them, there's one here about um, whether we've seen any uptake in online courses and online learning. Um, I, does anybody have any data? I mean, I, you would assume that more of this stuff is being consumed by more people. But I wonder if for anybody who's got anything in front of them, so AbilityNet, My Computer, My Way, we've seen 
about a 10 to 15 percent increase in take up of that in the last month or six weeks eight weeks um, these webinars are a lot busier and fuller and popular than they were six months ago we're getting over 200 signups to everyone typically we would have had more like 100 before so i think people are getting into the flow of doing online learning it's not the greatest thing for everybody but i think people are living with the fact this is better than nothing but does anybody else have any numbers of, uh, that they've seen or any data about the take up of particular learning we have for the library service we've had a huge uptake on our e-resources they were always quite well used anyway but we've seen obviously because they can't access hard hard copy books a huge rise in um accessing all our e-resources yeah i think at digital unite we've also seen a bit of an uptick in use of our technology guides and quite interestingly um as sort of kevin was saying earlier a bit of a shift in what people are looking at so a lot more people looking at online collaboration tools and, and video calling and online shopping and that sort of thing. So it's been quite interesting to read the, the kind of pa pattern of use, as well as a little bit of um, an uptick during this time. Yeah, exactly that. Um, we we um, actually saw a bit of a drop off at first when people first went into lockdown, but that has started to turn around. Uh, and I, as uh, Ari had just mentioned, we, we're seeing people go into different things to what they did before. Yeah. Well, I, 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 we've been asked a question actually on here about using Zoom. Um, I think uh, one of the things we need to mention very much from our AbilityNet's point of view is about accessibility. I think there still is a question and we haven't, we haven't deliberately haven't attempted to review all of that content in terms of accessibility. But for anybody with variety, of, um, so from, a, from our point of view, accessibility is about enabling people with any disability to access things on an equal basis to everybody else. So um, one of the things we've been working on is making our webinars as accessible as we can. Um, those captions that are appearing along the bottom are built into PowerPoint. So that's not anything extra that we've added in. Um, we've just made sure that we've been using them consistently and we've been asking people about their accessibility needs when they sign up and those sorts of things I think are really important as as you see increased take up it doesn't necessarily mean that they're any more accessible it just means people are getting used to using them so we would always advocate making them as accessible as possible um, teams is very good for that Microsoft teams because that has captions built in now um, and it's a that's more for meetings really rather than webinars if you like so we recommend using that um, and also zoom can be made to have captions in the way that we've done it here. We've got a couple of little tricks that we've used to be able to go off to a, a web browser and still keep the captions running. So I think in terms of using the, 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 the sort of e-learning stuff, there's one, obviously there's a big take up because people are having to use it really to some extent. But I think it's also important for all of us to remember that there'll be people who are still unable to use it. Um, not necessarily because they're not on the internet, but because it's just not designed to be used by them. And that's a quite a different thing. And, making sure everybody's looking at the accessibility of their resources. Um, brings me on to one final question here. Uh, uh, support for people whose first language is British Sign Language. Um, we don't have very much in AbilityNet around British Sign Language. There are apps that you can access uh, to provide British Sign Language interpretation, but there is, it costs too much for us to implement fully. I wonder if anybody else has got anything that they know of around British Sign Language or any resources that could be uh, referred to. I know you can go and study it as well as an online learning course. Because somebody's introduced me to that. Someone who's on furlough uh, has told me about it. So I know you can go and study for yourself, but I don't think it's very easy to provide it as part of an online learning platform. So I will mention the two, the two systems I know, one's called Signly and the other one is Sign Video, I think, but I'm, I'm fairly sure you have to pay for those. But I think you can get an app um, as, a, as a user of British Sign Language, you can have an app and you can pay for that app through your access to work um, or other benefits. So to provide access to the services, whether you could use that for online learning, I don't know, but I'm sure people are working that out um, as, a, as a, a sort of a hack, as a solution. Mm -hmm. Um, and the final point to make, we'll answer as many questions as we can in the notes afterwards. Um, but if you do have any particular direct questions, then please use our helpline 
uh, or ask us questions via Facebook or our inquiry service, um, and we'll do our best to, to get back to you. Great, thanks, Mark. Um, and as you say, with um, everybody doing so many things online, including online learning, that accessibility piece is just becoming more and more important. And I know that everybody on the call today is, is just as passionate about that. And um, from the digital champions to Learn My Way and the library services are, are core services supporting everyone in our community, but in particular people with accessibility needs. So just another great big thank you um, from us for joining us today. And hopefully um, this has been a good introduction to anyone who's interested in, um, in following up some of these tips. Um, so as I say, there are future webinars um, listed on our site um, and recordings um, on there. Some of them cross over with topics we've covered as well, including how to stay safe online. Um, so there's some great resources there. Um, and given the appetite for webinars, um, please do go and take a look at the recordings um, and sign up to the future ones as well. So just a final thank you for everyone joining us from the organizations and also for um, everyone who has, um, who has logged on today. Thanks ever so much. Thank you, Sarah. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Bye everybody.